Barnaby Jones, a QM production, starring Buddy Epson, also starring Lee Merriweather, Mark Shera, with guest stars Andrew Robinson, Kip Niven, Fred Sadoff, Kevin O'Brien, Sandra Curry, and Jimmy Rogers, with special guest star Bonnie Epson. Tonight's episode, Murder in the Key of C. Like the touch of your hand used to be I can't get around it It's the same as it sounded On the day you said goodbye to me Like raindrops that ride on the wings of a storm My memories keep me down And I must leave the light on To make myself warm Just great. Oh, thanks, Dan. Hey, go for it. Thanks. All set. Oh, Billy, I can't believe it. They want to publish Wind Song. <laughs> Move over, Sadaka. Here comes Connie Hollister. So, do you have the money? Oh, my God. You know, I still don't understand. If they want to publish my song, why do I have to pay them? Okay, I told you. Now, they pay for recording session, promotional fees, and all that. The artist always pays for the arrangements. Besides, I put in 1500 bucks. I pawned my mother's diamond ring. I just hope we're not making a mistake. 2,500 bucks is chicken feed. Fortunes are made in the music business. Gotta run. <gasps> Billy, who's the publisher? Bringing the words back to me Like a wind song Soft and gentle in my ear Like the touch of your hand used to be I can't get around it, it's the same as it sounded on the day you said goodbye to me. Like raindrops that ride on the wings of a storm, my memory is keeping me down. And I must leave the light on to make myself warm, I'm listening for your sound. Like a wind song, soft and gentle in my ear, like the touch of your hand used to be. I can't get around it, it's the same as it sounded on the day you said goodbye to me. It's a wind song. It's a wind song. It's a wind song. What did I tell you, Jimmy? Sensational, right? Singleton, you were right. This song is sensational. This song is great. I tell you what, uh, we're going to shoot a special in three days, and I'd like to use this song on the special, OK? <sighs> Mickey, would you take care of that for me, please? OK, Jimmy. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. Thanks, you bet. You're welcome. Sorry, buddy. We're closed. Uh, what's the story? You told me on the phone to come right over. It's okay, Billy. Come on in. Next time, Teddy, my boy, we celebrate with champagne. Uh, Phil, this is Billy Smith, the manager of that new songwriter. Right! Billy Smith. Hey, I'm sorry, kid. It's been a long day. Just got back from a session with Elton. Hey, have a seat. You want a drink or something? Hey, uh, no, thanks. Elton? No kidding. Yeah. I just read he was in Europe somewhere. London? Right. Palladium. Flew there and back over the weekend. Uh, you got the uh, promotion fees? Yeah, right here. <laughs> Look at my hand shaking. Yeah. I guess you know why. 
It was some thrill to hear... That's senior years. Uh, Connie what? The Connie Hollister. When I tell her, wow... 2,500, right. Now, you have Connie here for the recording session Friday at 1 o'clock. You'll have the musicians and all the arrangements ready, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Devine... Hey, Phil. Phil, we're all friends here, right? Oh, yeah. Look, there's just one more thing. We gotta pull one of those numbers Connie wrote. Uh, what was the name of that tune? Wind song? That's it. Ted doesn't think it's commercial enough. And we do want your lady to have a smash album, right? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, I don't understand why... Look, I'm with you, Bill. I don't think it's such a bad tune myself, but Teddy here, he picks him and... Uh... I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you 200 bucks for the tune. That way, everybody's happy, right? <laughs> it's a crazy business. All right. All you have to do is just sign over the rights to... Uh... Wind what? Wind song. That's a little artsy crafty. We're gonna have to change that title. Maybe even do a new lyric. Okay, here you go. You sign at the bottom, and we can get on with the more important business. Because when your singer comes on Friday, you guys are nothing but a couple of crooks. Hey, hey, what's the matter? What's bugging you? <laughs> Let's talk about this. Talk about what? How are you trying to rip off Connie and me? And Jimmy Rogers, how are you trying to jip him too? Jimmy Rogers? Yeah, sensationally said. Wants to use wind song on his next special, or don't you remember? I was in the control room the whole time I heard it all. No, 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 just cool it, okay? The guy tries to make the best deal he can, right? I'll tell you what I'll do. You name a price for that song, huh? I mean it, any price you want. Come on, kid, let's deal. Yeah, I'll deal. But I'll deal with Jimmy Rogers himself, not you two crooks. Right, now, look, look, punk, we can all come out of this fat and happy, huh? Just let me go. I'll give you 5,000 for it, huh? 5,000! Let me go, I said! Jim I'm telling you, we got too much riding on this. If he doesn't sign that release, I'm going to kill him. You already have. I didn't know what else to do, so I phoned Sheriff McAllister in Culverton, and he told me to come to you, Mr. Jones. Did you report all this to the Los Angeles police, Miss Hollister? Yes, and they read me a lecture about gullible young people who get taken by clever con artists. Well, you did give Billy Smith $1,000 to buy arrangements, didn't you? I know what you're thinking, but Billy and I grew up together in Culverton. Connie, it is possible to know someone all your life and really not know them. But he put up more than I did, $1,500. Did you see the $1,500? Or did he show it to you? No, why? I mean, why should he? Well, that's usually the way the scam works. The con, the unscrupulous promoter, pretends to invest his own money and then uh, disappears with the unsuspecting Mark's bankroll. No, no, I'll never believe Billy did that to me, never. This music publisher he was to give the money to, did he mention the name? I asked, but he ran away so fast. Do you have a picture of Billy that we could use? Yes. Then you will look for him. I, I can't pay much, but I have a job. Oh, we'll worry about that later. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Yes? Simon. So, this is how the rich live, huh, Mickey? How are you, baby? I've had a contract drawn up for a uh, wind song, that the Nietzsche. And the rich get richer. You provide Singleton and Divine a $5,000 advance. Five thousand. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, Mickey. You know, Jimmy Rogers is going to put that song at the top of the charts in a month. $5,000 advance and a profit participation in return for acquisition of Wind Song by Rogers and Javits Enterprises. Take it or leave it. <sighs> what do you think, Teddy? Well, Ted loves it. It's the first dollar he's earned with you. He doesn't have to be ashamed of. Hey. Yeah, Ted loves it. Well, since we all seem to be one big happy family around here, And now, if you can let us have that check in the name of your interior decorator. <clears throat> as soon as you give me the assignment of rights release from your composer. You got it with you? Sure. Teddy, let him have it. Oh, Phil, I'm sorry. The assignment, I, uh, I forgot to get Connie to sign it. I'm sorry. You dummy. Don't worry about a thing, Mickey. We'll have it for you by the end of the day. a guy like Javits out of five grand, and I'm a dummy. Where do we find this Connie Hollister? She works at a place called the coffee shop. No sweat. <laughs> right. Gee, Connie, we're sorry we iced your manager, but... That was an accident. 
Uh, we accidentally killed him and then buried him up in the hills. So now we have to get this release from you. You worry too much. Phil. We have been conning people out of nickels and dimes for so long, we couldn't make an honest deal when it was right there in the palm of our hands. What is it, Teddy? Are you bucking for Saint of the Week? something wrong, has he? I'm just trying to help somebody who's worried about him. Well, this is his room. Be my guest. Thank you, Miss Wallace. Martha. I, I used to be known as uh, Lily Larvin. You might have heard of me. I was in the picture business. Oh, yes. <laughs> that I worked in westerns, mostly. Oh, those were the great times in the business. Yesterday, when you saw him, did he happen to mention anything about having a late date, anything like that? No. Just took off in that beat-up pile of junk he calls a car. That he looked kind of happy about something. Shucks, he'll be back. You know how the young kids are now. Now, this is what really gives the music business a black eye. Those ads that promise some housewife or a truck driver that they're going to become a millionaire songwriter, they're terrible. Terrible. You mind if I borrow this? Not if you promise to throw it in the garbage where it belongs. Thank you very much for your time. Mr. Jones, the truth is, Billy has never stayed away overnight before. And I guess I am a little worried about him. I wish he'd come home. Thank you. When I was just a young girl, no taller than my daddy's knee, I used to go to the field out back and climb the highest tree and sit on a limb. Here I am again, out on a limb. When I was just a young girl, thought I knew everything inside I heard somewhere that a man had said there's a lot to learn in life a lot to learn in life and it sure was right and I learned last night yeah and so it could yeah Very good. Thanks. I don't recall hearing that one before. Oh, that's not surprising. I only sing my own songs. Oh, the picture you wanted of Billy? It was taken three months ago. Found this in Billy's room. Oh, gee. Sure are a lot of music publishers in the world, aren't there? Most of them have been checked off, I assume, by Billy. Any of them ring a bell? Hey. If Billy had ever mentioned anybody who wanted to publish my songs, I'd never forget that name. I suppose one day I'll find an easy way. You're not going to give up looking for him, are you? I rarely give up on anything I've barely started. You just be patient, and I'll be in touch. Connie. Connie, those two guys want to talk to you. Hi, I'm uh, Phil Devine, my partner, Ted Singleton. We really dig the way you laid on a lyric. Thanks, it's really nice to hear. Ted, I think we're at that moment that makes all the frustrations and disappointments of being a music publisher worthwhile. The moment when lightning strikes and a star is born. A <laughs> star is what? Sit down, let's talk. Well, we're not really supposed to sit with the customers. Teddy, Teddy, look at that face. Will you just look at that face? That's what I think the album cover should be. A full face shot, border to border. That's it. Connie Sings Connie, an album of your songs sung by you. How does that sound, huh? <laughs> You're putting me on. Connie, we've been here five times in the last week watching you, listening to you, and when we heard you sing Wind Song, I knew right then and there I had to sign you to a recording contract for our company. A contract? Oh, my God. 
County. If I'm any judge of what the American public wants, and I am, you ask Elton, Barbara, the rest, I think Winsong should strike gold in a month. Hey, maybe sooner. Who's complaining, huh? Gold? Now, is uh, 2000 all right for an advance? Dollars? Yeah, it's uh, just a small advance. Just a token fee to bind the deal for your exclusive services and uh, for the full rights to Winsong, of course. $2,000? Full rights to win song? Well, as your publisher, we need full rights to print sheet music, contract other artists to record the song. It's standard procedure. Now, if, uh, yeah, here it is. Sign right here. Oh, um. What's the matter? <laughs> An unknown like you? This is the chance of a lifetime. Don't you understand that? It's just that I have to talk to my manager first. Your manager? Billy. Billy Smith. Well, he's away right now, but I promise you, as soon as he comes back, this will all work out fine. Sure. We'll work out all the details of the contract. In the meantime, let's get this paperwork started, OK? You see, Billy just gave that song to another publisher. Shh. Connie. Oh, uh, look, I've got lots of songs just as good as Wind Song. No. <laughs> I mean, we particularly want that song. Without it, no deal. Connie, come on, you're on. I'm sorry. I just can't do anything until I talk to Billy. She has to talk to her manager first. Only problem is, we buried him up in the hill. Don't worry. She'll come around. And if she doesn't, what are you going to do then? Kill her, too? We were lovers, once we were friends, feeling this old house was song. You never heard of him. Yeah, I'm looking for a man Thank named Billy much. Smith. Okay. Thanks very much. Barnaby Jones investigation. Yeah, Barnaby. On that missing person case you're working, Billy Smith, his car's been located. Where, John? parking lot at the Valley Airport. There's just one thing. If he took a plane somewhere, he forgot a few little items, like a shaving kit, a briefcase full of music, and the keys to the car. Doesn't seem natural, does it? No. No, it doesn't. Thank you, John. She said she wouldn't give us the song, so what's the use? Uh, I'll call Javits and stall him. Don't worry, I'll get her to sign. No matter how, huh? Give me a beer. Hey, Connie. Oh. Hey, you came back. I was afraid maybe you wouldn't. Well, we had to take another shot at that favorite song of ours. Change your mind? Oh, gee, like I said before, I can't until Billy says it's OK. All right, then, just forget it. That's it. Besides, as you say, you got other songs, right? Oh, you mean you still want me to cut an album even without wind song? Are you kidding? You think we'd let a talent like you get away because of one song? Oh, wow. Uh, let me get rid of this. I'll be right back. Maybe we should try uh, using a cattle prod or gouging her eyes out. Bet she'd sign the song over to us then. I'm really beginning to worry about you, Teddy. Mr. Cool is worried. Good. Maybe there's some hope for the rest of us. So, uh, what now? All right, just sit down, relax. What we do now is look over all your music and pick out the best songs, right? Oh, I can't right now. How about tomorrow at 11 o'clock, before the lunch crowd gets here? Yeah, 11, fine. Hello, coffee shop. Uh-huh. Connie, there's someone named Barnaby Jones on the phone. Oh, excuse me. Barnaby Jones is that detective that called and left a message on the service about Billy. Shut up. Hello? Hello, Connie. The police found Billy's car. Billy's car? Where? At the airport in the valley. Well, so you think he must have flown off somewhere? That's possible. But I think we ought to keep our options open until we do a little more digging. Well, thanks for telling me. Bye. Uh, I heard you mention a Billy, on the, your manager? Yeah, they found his car at the airport. Well, it just took off like that, did he? I hope he didn't owe you any money. What makes you say that? Well, no reason. It's just a figure of speech. Why, he did? A thousand dollars. 
It figures. You hear that, Teddy? These phony managers just going around ripping off kids like Connie for everything they got. Oh, not Billy. No, he'll call as soon as he gets to where he's going. Want to bet? Um, what if he doesn't? Uh, what then? Oh, then it's still okay, because he'll be back. Hey, I'm on. Tomorrow, right? Right. You know, I don't think Javits is going to wait much longer. That's right. And that's why we're going to convince that girl once and for all that her manager's a fink. Come on. Get us out of the gutter and into the sewer. Damn it, Tito, I'm getting sick of this. I'll tell you what, Teddy baby. Instead of sicking Ruby on her, why don't we forget about wallowing around in all that filthy money we're going to make off that song and go right to the police station and confess, huh? Well, they're going to catch up with us sooner or later anyway. <laughs> I was kidding, but you're serious, aren't you? Phil, Connie is a pushover. But she's got Jones looking for the guy now. And he's not going to quit until he finds out what happened. So what good's our money going to do us, huh? Your nerves really are shot, aren't they? Look, it's not as if it were a cold-blooded murder. I mean, it was an accident. So if we go in there now with our story, we could get off easy. <laughs> Otherwise, they could throw the key away, man. Listen, you creep. Maybe you don't like the way we've been making our dollars, but it's been filling your chicken-livered belly for over 15 years. You owe me, man. You blow this one, and I'll kill you. Now get out. Go on, get out. Take a walk. Sober up. <laughs> Police department, please. Uh, I'd like to speak with someone in in homicide, I guess. Thank you. 
sir. Copies of a recent snapshot of Billy. All right, let me guess. You want me to pass him around the airport, right? Want to bet on the odds? I know it's a long shot since I'm not at all convinced he left town, but we've got to cover all the bases. Good morning. Morning, Betty. I already made the coffee. I knew I'd be punished for being late. Yeah, to die, you said that there was one of these firms you couldn't contact? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Singleton and Devine. See ya. Oh. Did JR just say Singleton? And Devine. Barnaby, I just heard that name uh, coming in on the car radio on the news. A man named Singleton was found dead yesterday. The police said it was a mugging. And I'm positive they said something about a music business. Theodore Singleton, according to the ID we found in his wallet. He belonged to the Musicians Union. Partner in Singleton and Divine Promotions. We're still trying to locate the partner to get a line on the next of kin. Any prints on the wallet? Uh, no. No, just a couple of smudges. And if he wore a watch, it disappeared along with whoever mugged him for his money. Well, that is what killed him. Particles of blood we scraped off match. What about the witness? Uh, the woman said she saw the car drive away. Well, she was dumping trash when she heard the car hit a barricade as it was taking off. She couldn't identify the vehicle, but she did think the driver was a man. From the car? Left front parking lot, probably from when it hit the barricade. Listen, is there a connection between Singleton and this Billy Smith you're looking for? Well, it may be pure coincidence, but um, Singleton and Devine's name showed up on a rather lengthy list of uh, music promoters that I found in Billy's room. I thought it was worth looking into. You may be right. Here, take a look at this. Bunko complaints? Yeah. The computer kicked that out when I ran a check on the victim. Uh, no convictions, but Singleton and Devine have been accused of every kind of con you can think of. And the way it looks, I wouldn't be surprised if this Billy Smith wasn't a part of their operation. Where's that smile? Oh. Your uh, manager didn't call the way you thought he would, right? He still might. Yeah, well, I wish he would. We could get on with this a lot faster. Is this uh, all of it? Mm-hmm. Isn't your partner coming? No, I couldn't raise him up to the apartment this morning. OK, let's start with this one, huh? He tells me you're Connie, Billy Smith's friend. That right, honey? What about Billy? He steals from working girls like me, that's what. And there's no rat lower than that. Where is he? I don't know. Look, sweetie, little old Ruby's got friends, heavyweights. And if that rat doesn't give me back my $500, I'll have his head broken. Please, what are you talking about? A lousy two-bit thief, that's what. He picked me up in Las Vegas day before yesterday, blew over 2500 of his own money on the crap tables. Wait, Las Vegas? You were there with Billy day before yesterday? Yeah, and yesterday and last night. That's when he took the 500 out of my purse while I was sleeping in the room. I wound up paying for the room, too. Uh, are you sure you're talking about my Billy? From Culverton, right? Yeah. He told me all about you. How he uh, conned you into believing he was some kind of manager or something. Manager, huh? Come on, where is he? Hey, uh, you got a legitimate beef. Now take it somewhere else, OK? Hey, man, I don't need you buttoning in. I'm out $500. That's tough. The lady doesn't know where the guy is, so beat it, huh? Heads are going to be broken, you hear me? Or yeah. maybe worse. Yeah, sure, sure. Hey, Connie, come on. Like they say, every knock's a boost, right? How you know, could he do that? Hi, uh, friend. Um, you tell Connie that I'm borrowing her music, and I'll call her back in a little bit, OK? Yeah, well, wait, hey, it's the big time, man. It's the big time. Uh, 
Barnaby Jones investigation may help you. This is Connie. Is Mr. Jones in? Oh, no, he isn't, Connie. Uh, I should be hearing from him any minute. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, hold on. He's here. Just a second. It's Connie Hollister. Those photographs do any good at the airport? No, Barnaby, I checked all the ticket counters. Nothing. Hello, Connie. Mr. Jones, you can forget about Billy Smith. I know where he is. At least I know where he was the last couple of days and nights. Uh, where, Connie? Las Vegas. I just talked with a girl who was with him. She saw him at the tables losing all his money and mine. He took her for a lot of her money, too. So that's it as far as I'm concerned. Who was she? She called herself a working girl, and you don't need to be a mental genius to know what kind of girl that is. Do you know her name? What she looked like? Some redhead named Ruby. Oh, Mr. Jones, I've been so dumb. Connie, Jr. did uh, this working girl say where Billy was staying in Las Vegas? No, and I couldn't care less, because I found a publisher on my own, and I don't need Billy anymore. Well. What do you think? Who's the real Billy Smith? The one she used to know or the one she thinks he's become? I think the answer to that is getting to be the passion of my life. Jedediah, why don't you check out this ruby? A red-headed working girl. That narrows it down. I'll have Lieutenant Biddle run that past vice. I'll be back in a little while. Okay. Uh... Terrible, Lieutenant. Ted and I were partners for over 15 years. Right. Uh, you, you want something? Mr. Devine? Uh, come back later, huh? What? Yo, no, no. His only next of kin is a sister in Canton, Ohio. Look, I mean, look, can't you see I'm busy? Uh, my name's Barnaby Jones. I just need a minute of your time. Yo, no, uh, tell the coroner not to worry. I'll contact the sister, take care of all the arrangements. Hey, look, no problem, Lieutenant. You want a statement? You got a statement. Anytime. Right. Oh, okay, thanks. I take it that was Lieutenant Biddle about your partner's death. My condolences. I'm a private investigator looking into the disappearance of a young man named Billy Smith. Billy Smith? What's he got to do with Ted? Oh, then you know Billy. Hey, I didn't say that. Now, uh, what's this all about? It's about ripping off songwriters with lots of phony promises. That sound familiar to you, Mr. Devine? And wait a minute. Are you accusing Ted Singleton of that? Now, it's my turn to say I didn't say that. Yeah. Yeah, but I know what you're thinking. Damn it, you're right. I mean, poor Ted. The amount of trouble he's gotten me into. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been dragged down to the DA's office to wangle our way out of bunco charges. You're saying that uh, Billy was one of his marks? Look, I swear I never even heard of Billy Smith, but that's not to say he didn't come through this door and that Ted didn't con the pants off him. Too bad we can't hear your partner's side of it. Ted gave me a lot of aggravation over the years, Mr. Jones. But what could I do, huh? He was my friend. Thanks for your time. Now I sit watching the old willow bend And leaves dancing on the lawn The wind song Something gentle in my ear, like the touch of your used to be. Jedediah, did you get anything on Ruby? Yeah, Barnaby Vice came up with a possible. You got a pencil? Yeah. Go ahead. Got it. Thank you, Jedediah. Okay, okay, look, you got my number. Just have Connie call me when she gets back. Yeah, thanks. Yo, what's going on? You said you had the assignment rights to win songs signed and to me yesterday. Then you said by this morning. Now, where is it? I need another day, Mickey. Would you be straight with me for once in your life? You horsing me around again because I'm telling you now, if I don't have your composer's signature in my hands before we start taping Jimmy's special tomorrow night, the song is out. I'm not stalling you. It's just I'm going to be spending the day making funeral arrangements. It's Ted. He was murdered yesterday. Ruby? Just a minute. Uh, who 
sent you, I'll give him a bonus. I hear you've been working Vegas lately. That's way out of your territory, so I've been told. Who told you that? A fellow over in Vice. May I come in? All right, so you're having trouble getting the rights to this song. You know, my problem, Mickey, is the middle of this show, because this song fits the show perfectly. I'll be right back. I think the middle of a show problem's just been solved. Well, Mickey, here she is. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Nice, isn't it, Phil, to do an honest day's work? Hey, come on now. Don't be a sore winner, huh? Okay, no more cheap shots. Drop by the office later. I'll have the uh, check for your advance. Mickey, how would you like me out of the picture altogether? Instead of that $5,000 advance, you give me $50,000 and I hand the song over to you outright. All publishing rights, royalties, everything for $50,000? You gotta admit, it's not a bad deal. That's what worries me. If the tune hits as well as Jimmy says it will, it'll be worth... Four or five times 50,000. What are you trying to pull? All right. It's Ted. Half that money belongs to him, and, well, uh, his family needs the bread now. The funeral arrangements, the whole shot, they're really in rough shape. And Connie Hollister? Your composer, remember? She agreed to being sold out? Sold out? What kind of talk is that? She's already been paid for that song. Besides, I'm her manager, and she does what I say. Then bring her here. Let me hear it from her own lips. Mickey, this is not a hype. Now, you saw the signature on the release. Here, personal manager. See, she also signed this. Phil, I want her to tell me these are her signatures. Then you get the 50,000. Okay, have the check made out. I'll be back with her in an hour. A joke? Saying she was in Las Vegas with Billy a joke? That's what Ruby said at first, but I caught her in a lie. She said that she and Billy saw a comedian in Las Vegas that I knew was playing in San Francisco at the time. Then you think someone put her up to it? Obviously, but unfortunately, I couldn't get her to say who or why. Well, you've just got to make her tell. You've got to. I don't have that authority, Connie. Lieutenant Biddle does, and as a matter of fact, I'm on my way over to talk to him about that right now. Mr. Jones. If Billy didn't go to Las Vegas with that girl, where did he go? It doesn't do any good to speculate on things we can't be certain about. I'll be in touch. song soft and gentle in my ear like the touch of your hand used to be what is it mr jones that song what is it wind song i swear i heard that song yesterday afternoon at the center well how could that be i told you i've never sold any of my songs yes i know that that's what puzzled me oh wait that's not exactly true anymore i did sell one but only last night Remember, I told you I found a publisher of my own. Singleton, a divine. How did you know? I'll tell you as soon as I check something.
How's my superstar, huh? Hello, Phil. Now, look, I told you I moved fast, and I have. There's a guy I want you to meet, Mickey Javits, who happens to be Jimmy Rogers' manager. Jimmy Rogers? That's right, and if you do exactly what I tell you to do, I think we can convince Jimmy Rogers to sing Wind Song in a special tonight, but we haven't got much time. Tonight? That's right. Let me just get my guitar put away. You know, that guy is just in here, uh, Jones. Jones. So uh, what did he want? Oh, do you know him? Oh, yeah, he stopped over the office yesterday, said he was looking for Billy. Uh, he have any luck? Only that he found out that that girl, Ruby, lied. She was never in Las Vegas with Billy. No kidding. Uh, is she tell him anything else? No, but it's kind of weird, isn't it? I mean, what could anybody get out of making it look like my manager left me? The only thing I can think of is... What? Well, I thought it was kind of funny at the time. What's funny? That I didn't recognize you and Ted the first time I talked to you. You said you came in here five times before to see me sing, but I'd recognize anybody who came in here more than once. <laughs> You knew about the song from Billy, didn't you? Hey, this is crazy. You know we haven't got much time. Let's go. I don't think I should leave right now. All right, take a good look. It's exactly what it looks like, a gun. Get the apron off, keep your mouth shut, and move. Come on, come on, come on. Sir, you know Mr. Devine's car when you see it? Sure, I park it all the time. What about it? I'm checking on an accident he may have had in the last day or so. You've got to be kidding me. He put a claim in for that little bump. Well, with the price of repairs nowadays, one little bump can be expensive. Well, sure, but how much can a parking lot cost? Ten bucks? Twenty? Hey, there's a car right now. Why don't you go check it out for yourself? Oh, excuse me. Now, remember. Whatever Javid says to you, you're crazy about this deal, right? What are you going to do with me? After I cash the check at the bank, I'll let you go. In the meantime, when you get out of here, just keep on smiling. OK. Anything smart, and you're both dead, and I mean it. Come on. Ah, uh, Connie, this is a surprise. Yes, isn't it? Uh, Phil tells me that you two have already met. He's my new manager. Yeah, well, we've got an important appointment, Mr. Jones. Uh, anything I can do for you? I wonder if I could have a private word with Connie for a moment. It's uh, personal. Connie? I don't think we have time right now, Mr. Jones. Well, uh, maybe later. How does it feel to have your first song published and recorded by Jimmy Rogers? It's fantastic. I mean, who would ever dream? And you know what else? Mickey Javits has just picked three more of my songs to be published. It's like, oh, it's like I have to keep pinching myself to make sure I'm awake. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Connie Hollister. I'll be right back. Barnaby, I realize she has every right to be excited about her career, but doesn't she know that Billy's body was found by the police this morning? She knows. I'd like to dedicate this song to a friend, Billy Smith. Once we were lovers, once we were friends, filling this old house with song. Now I sit watching your willow bend and leaves dancing on the lawn. A wind song, soft and gentle. 
gentle in my ear Like the touch of your hand used to be Thank you.